This short video is going to demonstrate how you can reload your Go server during development whenever you make changes to your application code. And this can be useful because during development you're frequently changing code in the code base and you don't want to have to manually rerun the go run command every time you do that. In this video we're going to show an alternative that uses live reloading and we're going to see how to use a package called air in order to do this. So let's dive in. So for this example here, we have a very simple Go app open in VS Code, and there's nothing exciting about this app. All we have is an http.handle func call, and for this particular path here, we are attaching a handler here, and it's the index handler from the lines above. And all that that handler is doing is writing hello world to the response, and that's going to be served back to the client when they go to that URL. Now the problem we're going to demonstrate is the problem of when we make a change, the Go server is not going to automatically reload. We're going to have to manually stop the server and restart it whenever we make a change to the code base. So let's demonstrate this in action. We're going to expand the terminal here and I'm going to run the go run command and we're going to pass main.go in there. And that's going to start this server that we have and we're listening here on port 8000. So when we start the server here, you can see that the program is running and it's hanging here. It's waiting for the requests to come in. And we can go to the browser and we're going to see that hello world page. So let's do that just now. And I'm on the browser now and we can see hello world at the top left. Now let's say we wanted to make a very simple change, but this will apply to any changes you want to make as you develop your Go application. Let's say we wanted to change hello world and we wanted to change that message to something else. So let's change the text here and I'm going to paste in Go is the best and then we're going to save the file. But if we go back to the browser and we reload this page, we're still getting the same message that we had before. We're still seeing hello world at the top left. So in order to fix this, we need to go back to VS Code and we're going to need to stop this process here. So I'm going to press Command C and that's going to stop the server that we have running. Now, once we've stopped the server, we can restart it using the same go run command. And then when we go back to the page and reload the page, we now get the changed code. We now get the changed message for that particular URL. But that's not the best development process. A lot of backend frameworks, these have automatic reloading of the server whenever you make a change to the code base. So how can we get that in Go? One way is to use this package here and it's called Air. And what this package provides is live reload for Go apps. And you can see it's got a number of stars here, 14,500. So very popular package in the Go ecosystem. And you can add that to your project if you want that functionality when you want to reload whenever you make a change without actually having to do that manually. So let's scroll down and we're going to go to the readme here. And if we keep scrolling down here, we eventually get to the installation section and we can install this using the go install command. So if you're running go 1.22 or higher, you can copy this command and we can go back to the terminal and we're going to stop the server. But before we run the go install command, we're going to initialize a go module here. So I'm going to run the go mod init command and let's just call this main for this video. That's going to add the go.mod file on the left hand side. And then I'm going to paste in that go install command to install air into this project. Now you can see the message here that air requires a version of go that's greater than or equal to 1.22. So when I run that go install command, we're actually going to download Go version 1.22 in order to be able to use the Air package. Now, once that download is completed, what we're going to do is go back to the GitHub page for Air. And if we go down to the section below the installation section, we have a section here on usage. Now, the simple way to use Air is just to run the Air command and we can point that towards an air.toml file. Now, in order to generate that configuration file, what we can do is run the air init command. So let's copy that and go back to the terminal. And I'm going to clear this terminal here and paste that command in. And when we run air init, you can see on the left hand side that has generated that .air.toml file. And this contains some configuration that tells the application what to do when we run the air command line tool. Now let's have a look at some of the configuration in this file. One thing to note is the build command that we have here, and that's the go build command with an output file of main.exe, and that is output into the temporary directory. And Air knows about this binary main.exe because it's set here in this binary option. Now we also have some exclude and include directives in this configuration file. For example, we can exclude particular directories from being part of the build process, and we can include certain directories as well using the include dir directive. And the same applies here. We have some extensions that we can include and also some files that we want to include as well as exclude from the build process. So you can configure the air.toml file in order to tell air when you want to rebuild the executable and when you might want to leave that. If particular things that have changed are not going to be relevant to the output binary. 
And if you scroll down here, we have a lot of other options that you can configure. And we have some options here for the coloring of the output on the command line and some options for logging and miscellaneous options and some options for the screen. Now we're gonna skip all of that. You don't really need to configure that. The simple way to run air is just to go back to the command line and we're gonna clear this input here and we're just gonna run the air command. And when you run that command, you can see the logo and you get some of the actions that are being performed down below here. So air will watch the directory for changes. It will build your application into an executable and then it will run that executable after the build process is complete. Now just to prove that this is running, let's go back to our browser and we're gonna go back to this page. And if we refresh the page, you can see we still get the message at the top left. But what we can do now is go back to our Go application and we're gonna go back to the source code in this handler function. And what I'm gonna do is change this again, and let's go back to hello world. When we change that back, you can see when we save the file at the bottom, Air has detected that the main.go file has changed, and it's rebuilding that output executable. And once that's completed, it's rerunning the process. So if we go back now to the browser and refresh the page, we are automatically getting the updated page. So the code changes have been reflected immediately on this page. And this is a much better development experience because we don't need to stop the server manually and restart it. We can make any kind of change we want to our program and that is gonna be automatically picked up by air. So in this case, we've again changed the message. If we go back to the browser and refresh, we get the updated message. And that's all for this video. It's been a very simple video. We've shown how to use Air for live reloading of our Go applications during development whenever we make changes to the code base. And Air can be a very useful tool in your development workflow. You can add it to any Go project and it's gonna help you save time. And it'll also help you preserve your sanity while developing with Go. Now, if there are any other tools like this that you're aware of, leave a comment below the video. I'd be very interested to know if there are similar types of tools that you find useful in your Go workflow. And if you've enjoyed this content, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for much more Go content in the future. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.